Welcome to CFTC Talks. I'm your host, Andy Bush. Hey, just a bit of housekeeping. You can subscribe to the podcast by going to the podcast button on your phone and then searching for CFTC Talks and then hit subscribe if you want to get it every week. By the way, we're on a number of different places where you can listen to this uh, on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Google Play, iHeartRadio, Libsyn, and Spotify. And of course, you can always listen to the podcast by going to our website, cftc.gov, and clicking on the podcast button. We're at over 25,000 downloads and growing. And I just wanted to personally say to all listeners out there, thanks so much. It, it really makes a difference. It's great. It gets me amped up to get new people on the show, new guests, new insights, new information, so you and I can learn about the markets we watch. Okay, let's get started. And we always start by saying there's a disclaimer at the end of the show that's important for you to listen to. It's been a busy start to 2018 for the CFTC. Just a few things to comes to mind right away. I mean, the agency just signed an agreement with the UK's FCA to collaborate on fintech. The agency went after bad guys from spoofing to deceptive trading. And the agency held a meeting of the Market Risk Advisory Committee. With that in mind, we thought it would be a great idea to bring on the sponsor of the Market Risk Committee, Commissioner Russ Benham, to discuss the meeting and to tap into his deep knowledge of policy at the agency. Russ, welcome to CFTC Talks. Thanks, Andy. It's great to be with you. Hey, before we get to the CFTC, let's talk about your background because it's pretty varied and it's very cool. So let me just run through some of the stuff, ladies and gentlemen. You'll love this. You did your undergraduate work at Georgetown. You got a JD from Syracuse. You traded equities uh, in New York. You practiced law in New York. You were at the New Jersey office of the attorney general. You co-founded and helped start up a single route regional airline. And most recently, you were senior counsel for Senate for Senator Debbie Stabenow on the Agriculture Committee. So, so Russ, how have all of these helped shape your thinking as you start this new professional challenge at the CFTC? Well, w when I think about it, uh, financial markets are definitely a common thread through my previous jobs, starting with my time on the trading desk, as you uh, mentioned, all the way through my most recent position in the U.S. Senate. When I think back, each opportunity kind of created a sense of curiosity in my mind to, to view financial markets from a different perspective so that I could at least subjectively have a better handle on the way markets work whether it was representing clients or acting in an enforcement capacity at the New Jersey Attorney General's office, each position viewed financial markets from a different lens. And most recently, as you noted, I spent more than six years working on the Senate Agriculture Committee and had the great privilege of working specifically for Senator Debbie Stabenow from Michigan. During Dodd-Frank, especially implementation phase, listening to stakeholders and hearing consequences of regulation, intended or, or unintended, gave me a real interesting perspective on how to craft and think about policy. Mm. Yeah, I would imagine that would be. I mean, to hear both sides positive and negative about what was going on with that. And because the rules were made in such a uh, shortened time frame, I'm sure there was a lot of people willing to give their input. Absolutely. And, you know, I always note that when folks came to D.C., they they came up to the Hill, too, which is great because mm. we need to hear what's working, what's not working. And we need to make sure that the agencies are following congressional intent. Yeah, great point, great point. Well, I, I got to dive into the airline a little bit. I, sure. I know you haven't got to that, but ladies and gentlemen, full disclosure, I've used this airline and so has my family. And we were broken hearted when it stopped flying between Chicago and Pelston, Michigan. So, so Russ, tell our audience about that role and, and what you learned working there and how did that experience help you with your role at the CFTC? Yeah, it was an interesting situation and a unique opportunity. A friend from college actually reached out to me in the summer of 2010 He's originally from Michigan, but um, after graduation has lived in Chicago. Mm. Um, and he started essentially a blueprint in that summer for what ended up being the business plan for providing flight service between Chicago and Northern Michigan. When he asked me whether or not I wanted to participate, I jumped on the opportunity and essentially spent the next eight months helping stand up the company, mm -hmm. which included finalizing the business plan, raising private capital, executing agreements with our operational partners, and of course, securing permits and licenses with regulators. Yeah. Uh, reflecting on that eight months and the challenges we face, these are all exercises that entrepreneurs and business owners, small or large, have to go through every day to succeed. And now in my current role as a policymaker, 
I, I feel like I have a unique recognition to support rules and regs that are carefully tailored to the objective of the regulations without creating undue burdens. These burdens are a big challenge for small businesses yeah. and, and they're a cost to the bottom line. So I think as a regulator, as a policymaker, we have to be very cognizant of what challenges folks face um, every day when they're trying to run their business. What I think is great is n- not only that you were an entrepreneur, but that you looked at you you looked at regulation now differently because you had to go through the process, to, yeah. and then you realize, oh yeah, this is difficult. This is this. Oh, I can see where a barrier would be here, and why are they? Why do why do I have to sign this paper or do that? So that must have been a little bit of an eye opener, right? Absolutely. And and every day it was a new challenge. Every day it was a new issue or new roadblock, and you just have to keep your head down, stick to your sort of goal, and yeah. think about the end game. Um, one of the coolest things about that opportunity and. And, you know, finally getting standing up the company was we saw a void in the market. We saw a demand and a need for service, which, you know, right. gladly, I think <laughs> folks enjoyed for a few years at least. It was awesome. Um, but we filled it and it was it was pretty neat to, to be able to do that. And success or failure, it's just it's the grit. It's working out um, a challenge and, and figuring out a solution, which was a really neat opportunity. And, and I just think that's so important for your role here uh, at the agency at the CFTC. So so let's get to that. Let, let's talk about yeah. that. What's your vision for this role as commissioner? Well, uh, it, it's a it's a good question, and uh, I think back to a speech I gave actually at Georgetown University here in D.C. back in November of 2017, so just a few months back, and only two months after I was sworn in. Mm-hmm. The major theme of the speech uh, was that the CFTC is at an inflection point, and what I meant about that was we're 10 years past the financial crisis, we're eight years past the time that Dodd Frank was signed into law by President Obama. And the CFTC is at this unique period where we should be reflecting on Title VII of Dodd-Frank, which was the derivatives title. Um, A huge part of my speech and my remarks were geared to what we absolutely should not do is roll back any sort of major reforms that were included in Title VII. But what we do need to do is make sure that, again, congressional intent and the rules and regs that the CFTC has implemented since 2010 are working for the market. And they're right. working as intended. So we have to take a fresh look. Um, and I know the chairman through through Project KISS is that that's the intent. And I think it's going to be, a, a in the end, a great exercise for both the CFTC and the public to engage and figure out what's working and what's not working. Um, and be very surgical in the way we address issues and really only... Um, take on issues where there are unintended consequences. Right. I think it's worth pointing out that during that same speech, um, I sort of announced a listening tour. And I think this is along the same themes of what the chairman tries to do. Uh, But what I think is good for government and good as a commissioner is we need to listen. We need to listen to people here in D.C. and also across the country. So, so far I've been, I think, to about seven states. I've visited about 50 different stakeholders. I I, I know I talked to you when you were in Iowa. You were driving all over the place in Iowa. That was great. I I love Iowa. I've been out there many, many times. But I I know you had a nice time out there. Good people to see. And and they're excited to see us. Uh, They have their issues. They have their challenges. But it's really, I think... Um, an enlightening experience, but also very gratifying to see mm-hmm. um, how much folks appreciate the fact that we're coming out to them yeah. to see what what they're doing and the challenges that they face as business owners and what we can do here back in D.C. to address some of those things in a thoughtful way so that uh, we can address all constituencies um, in, a, in a balanced way, but also keeping in mind you know, some of the things and issues we dealt with back 10 years ago during the financial crisis and how we have to be thinking about moving forward in a smart way. Yeah, and I think that's what's great, whether it's the chairman or yourself. I think it's just so important for people to get out of D.C. to go visit the people that Absolutely. rules and regs are impacting their lives. So my hat's off to you. And one of the things that I, I like that you do big time, of course, is the Market Risk Advisory Committee. And, and I mentioned it at the beginning, but like... Um, and you're the sponsor for it. So l- let me just say for our audience, this committee is charged with advising the commission on matters related 
to evolving market structures and movement of risk across clearinghouses, exchanges, intermediaries, market makers, and end users. It examines systemic issues that threaten the stability of the derivatives markets and other financial markets and makes recommendations on how to improve market structure and mitigate risk. And the committee just held its first meeting. And what what was the focus of this first meeting? And, and why did you choose that topic? Well, there were three parts that I really wanted to achieve in having the meeting. The first was to shed light on the self-certification process from the CFTC's perspective. Really clarify some in- misinformation about the process and share perspective on why self-certification has worked well for over 15 years. The second part was to discuss self-certification from the market participants' point of view. I think above all else, there was a pretty close to unanimous support for the self-certification process from the committee members. And in my view, the meeting produced a lot of helpful takeaways for market participants that I'm confident will be embraced in the future as new products, you know, including crypto assets are launched. Finally, I wanted to make sure that uh, as a commission, as we address these issues in the future, regulatory concerns related to crypto assets and fintech are considered in a thoughtful, transparent manner. It's important that the decisions are made by the whole commission, which includes the chairman and, of course, the whole commissioners. Certainly an interesting issue with the Bitcoin contracts um, and, and a challenging one that I don't think the agency has dealt with, either have the stakeholders. So I think it was an important exercise for the commission to hold a public meeting to talk about what we do, what the stakeholders do, and how we're going to be addressing these issues in the future. Yeah, and I think that's what's great. It kind of follows up on you going out to the pu- people who are being impacted by the regulations. And now you, you have an open meeting. It was the first one of yeah. the committees, uh, which hadn't met in a while, which is great. And so then you can hear the market participants come in and tell you what they're thinking on this subject. So I think that's that's awesome. But some people don't know that that's what we yeah. do. And hopefully those will be up on our website at, at some point so we can see them. Um, Bitcoin is, is fascinating from a number of different points of view for sure. And I'm sure from that meeting, like what, what jumped out at you um, that, that you learned from the people that were there? I mean, it, is there like top three things that, that kind of came to mind that, that either surprised you, you thought were really cool? I mean, this is a challenging space for the agency, no doubt. So I'm yeah, sure it was, it was a fun time to listen to what people's views it, it, were. Yeah, there was certainly public excitement. I think we had standing room only at the meeting. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin continue. And, and, you know, with the December price, Prices going up. This was certainly, um, as we got into the new year, an issue that was a hot topic. It continues yeah. to be, but we have to be thoughtful about how we address it. I was, I was actually in a part of this listening tour. I was in San Francisco a few weeks back and met with a bunch of fintech companies. It's just really amazing work and and a very thoughtful, forward looking vision that's going on in the space. And I think there's just a ton of exciting opportunities uh, that will serve the market well from an efficiency standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, thinking about blockchain and thinking about obviously the crypto assets. As a general matter, when I think about Bitcoin and some of the other crypto assets, my focus at this point is to educate myself, and I think everyone, Commissioner Quinten is doing a great job, Chairman Giancarlo as well. We have to ensure that regulators including myself, do our best to move in tandem with the developments in technology. It's easy, you know, in the government to get flat-footed, but I don't think we really have that option with this technology because it's moving so fast. (laughs) No doubt. Um, And we also, we have to do everything we can do to stay engaged, promote the innovation, support technology, but also taking a balanced, careful approach to new regulations. We have to ensure that the rules of the road are clear, they're transparent, and they're fair. And especially with a product like Bitcoin, where you have a lot of retail exposure, I think it's really incumbent on all regulators to make sure customer protections are number one priority. Uh, We have to educate ourselves, but we have to educate consumers and customers. um, And we have to continue to to sort of beat the drum on what um, the technology presents, both good and bad, and make sure that we're being thoughtful and fair and balanced about how we approach it from a regulatory perspective. Well, I think it's a topic that you're going to be on oh, yeah. <laughs> for your entire career, however long it is here Absolutely. at the CFT. Mine too. I've spent a lot of time diving into it. Um, and, and I guess uh, there'll be other topics. The M- MRAC, the uh, Market Risk Advisory Committee, will be looking at it. And, and now that you've come in, this is, I guess it's your opportunity to reshape it or, or send it in the direction that you want to go in. Reconstitute. Is reconstitute. The word. Yeah. Reconstitute. That's yeah, great. Yeah. So, so, what are your goals? Where do you think you're going to take this thing? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. But like you said, following this past meeting, in the next few months, I'll be taking steps to renew the charter of the committee. 
um, and rec- reconstituting the membership. So mm. I'd expect to publish a federal register notice to invite members broadly okay. of the public to nominate individuals, or they can nominate themselves to become members of the the new charter or the new MRAC. Uh, my goal is to have two meetings in 2018, probably one slightly before and one slightly after peak summer season. Uh, we want to make sure people are in town and ready to travel. Um, and really let the new membership dictate the path of the discussions. I think sometimes it gets lost um, in the public and within this building also that these advisory committees are really, they're, they're, they're the committees of the membership. And it's, it's mm. their committee to discuss and talk about issues. Obviously, sponsors like myself play a key role. We want to shape um, the message in, in the sense of making sure we're talking about the right issues and the right topics. Uh, but really is an opportunity for the committee membership to to bring up issues which are challenging to them. Um, to that end, even though obviously, like I said, I want the committee to bring up ideas and, and we'll decide collaboratively on what the best path forward is, I'm hopeful and confident that, you know, given some of the issues we're dealing with today in the sort of risk department, customer protection, cybersecurity, operational risk, mm-hmm. custodial investment risk, and certainly fintech risk. Right. Um, I think we definitely need to think about what risks are posed by fintech broadly, whether it's crypto assets, DLT, or blockchain. So uh, a lot to come, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks and <laughs> yeah. months, but I think it's going to be uh, an interesting time. I do, I do want to also add, um, temporarily, I'm the sponsor of the Agriculture Advisory Committee. Okay. Um, and that is very near and dear to my heart, coming from the Senate Agriculture Committee for over six years. Certainly. Um, learned a lot about production agriculture and certainly the challenges of production agriculture. And I think, you know, we should never forget that these are these regula- CFTC regulated markets were created for agriculture. Right. Um, and that's, that's never going to be uh, forgotten, I think, at least personally. Um, my first visits, as you pointed out, were in the Midwest in Iowa, Kansas, and Illinois. And I certainly intend to use the Ag Advisory Committee as a venue to help shape, shed light on issues that um, the ag community is struggling with right now. Certainly, um, a message I heard repeatedly on the Hill um, was some of the unintended consequences from Title VII and Dodd-Frank and making sure that pure end user is not caught in a regulatory trap. Um, you know, they are the heart and soul of the markets. Uh, they need to manage their risk. And um, I've done and I will continue to do whatever I can to make sure that they're able to use the markets in a, you know effective, cost-effective way. Right. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, the thing is, as I step back and kind of think about this agency, it, it you know, what's nice and what I'm hearing is not only from you, but others as well is like, we're smart guys, right? We, we, we know a lot so. of stuff. <laughs> but I mean, that's why you're where you're at, for sure. Um, but what I think it's great is that we, we, we realize we only know so much and, and we're intelligent enough to, and to some extent humble enough to know that we're a lot smarter when we engage other yeah, people absolutely. and get their brains on this stuff. So always learning. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. that for me, that's what I really love about working here, which is totally fun. But okay, that aside, um, Given these initiatives and and your vision of what you want to do, what do you see are the top challenges uh, for the agency? In my mind, the number one challenge is our resources. Um, mm-hmm. I've you know back on the hill, uh, my former boss, Senator Stabenow, has you know been fighting for this for years, and it's something getting to know the agency, getting to know its history, and getting to know its new mandate after Dodd Frank. Um, huge challenges we face with the new congressional mandate. And then on top of that, fintech challenges, cybersecurity. Um, there's a lot to do. There's a huge mission. And I think we, we, you know, we need a little bit more in the resource department to be able to fulfill that mission. That said, you know, the past five, six months I've been here has been a really a great opportunity to meet really tremendous staff. Um, all the staff in this building, just top-notch individuals who care very deeply about their job and are really experts in the field. Um, and above all else, they do a fantastic job with the resources we have. But again, pivoting and it's keeping the, the message sort of consistent is with the advent of fintech and cybersecurity issues, automated trading, these are all huge challenges that I think uh, the agency faces. Obviously, the chairman has been very public about the challenges these face. Mm-hmm. Has been. Um, on the Hill the past couple of weeks talking about these issues. And 
Um, I think we just have to keep our head down, make sure we're talking to people, hearing issues and staying on top of things. In the end, I, I am confident and hopeful that as we stay on top of these issues, we're going to stick to our process. Um, we got to promote transparency and accountability. These are the things that I think make a great regulator and, and will keep us honest in the end. All right, CFTC Commissioner Russ Benham, thanks for coming on the show today. Andy, my pleasure. Great to be here. Uh, yeah, thanks. All right, we'll be back next week with another guest on our quest to learn about the markets we watch. I'm Andy Bush. This has been CFTC Talks. Thanks for listening. But wait, we're not done yet. It's time for a disclaimer. The CFTC is providing this information as a public service, and it is neither a legal interpretation nor a statement of CFTC policy. Reference to any specific product, service, trademark, manufacturer, or service provider does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by the CFTC. The CFTC is not liable to any consumer or any third party for any direct, indirect, incidental, consequential, special, or exemplary damages or lost profit related to the use of the information provided or referenced in this podcast. Selection of guests on the podcast does not imply an endorsement of any particular individual or entity. Many individuals and entities provide similar services to those of the guests. The views and opinions expressed by the guests in the podcast are their own and not specifically endorsed by the CFTC. Moreover, the information provided in this podcast should not be construed as investment advice. Consumers should rely on their own inquiries as to accuracy and relevance of the information incorporated or referenced in this podcast and assume the entire risk related to its use. The CFTC is providing its interpretation of market trends solely to inform the public of a framework for projecting possible outcomes under different scenarios. If you have any questions concerning the meaning or application of a particular law or rule administered by the CFTC, please consult an attorney. Thank you.